Hey guys, it's me again, Sir Lee Knows. This topic is about analyzing literature as a mirror to a shared heritage of people with diverse backgrounds. Before we start, I'd greatly appreciate if you will hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you will not miss any update on this channel. Let's get started. Literature, like poetry, prose, songs, and other forms, reflect rich cultural heritage of any group of people all around the world. These may include the people group's language, religion, food, social habits, music, and arts embedded in any body of literature. Let me show you specific examples of these. The African literature includes a body of traditional oral and written literatures in Afro-Asiatic and African languages together with works written by Africans in European languages. It includes themes on slave narratives, protests against colonization, calls for independence, African pride, hope for the future. Look at this excerpt from the novel Things Fall Apart by the Nigerian novelist Shinua Achebe, I am greatly afraid. We have heard stories about white men who made the powerful guns and the strong drinks and took slaves across the seas, but no one thought the stories were true. Things Fall Apart, along with other African writings during those eras, depicts the pains of colonialism and oppression that impacted the lives of Africans. The Japanese people's attitude towards nature is described as man on harmony with nature. This deep sense of love and appreciation of nature is commonly reflected in their literature and art. Look at these short Japanese 17-syllable poems called haiku. Now, let's take a closer look at this haiku using the object, firefly, for that brief moment when the firefly went out. Oh the lonely darkness, by Hokushi. Fireflies or lightning bugs, hotaku in Japanese, play a significant role in Japanese society. Firefly is a symbol of love to the Japanese people. Also, their lights are also believed to be the altered form of the souls of soldiers who died in war. This metaphor was also believed to be used throughout the 1988 Japanese animated film, Hotaru no Haka, or Grave of the Fireflies, as representations of the soldiers who died in the World War II but also those innocent who died from the side effects of war such as starvation. Also, the Japanese song, Hotaru no Hikari or Light of the Firefly is another famous piece of literature that uses this same theme. If you will look into these Japanese texts, you will see the Japanese people's traditions, beliefs, culture, and heritage, particularly their appreciation for nature and poetry, are deeply embedded in their literature. Chinese people have very rich culture mirrored in their literature. Chinese poems usually are short, often composed of only four lines. But in spite of brevity, a quatrain should contain three essential values, harmony of tone, evocative images, and a state of mind. Chinese poetry would discuss subjects like hardship in military service or seasonal festivities, agricultural chores or rural scenes, love or sports, aspirations or disappointments of the common folk and of the declining aristocracy. Look at this poem, Toiling Farmers, written by Li Shen during the Tang Dynasty. Farmers weeding at noon, sweat down the field soon. Who knows food on a tray thanks to their toiling day. The poem reflects the working life of a farmer. The lines describe how the farmer toils under the scorching heat of the sun and how his work is so important that every grain on people's bowl comes at the expense of hard work. At present, this poem is often used at the dinner table by Chinese parents into the mouth oh. nice. in order to teach their children about not wasting food. The Disney's 2021 animated film Raya and the Last Dragon is another great example of a literature that was inspired by Southeast Asian countries' culture and traditions. Let's look at these real cultural references cited in the movie, Sisu, the Water Dragon. Sisu was inspired by the Naga, protectors of water realm, which appear in Hinduism, Buddhism, and Jainism and were believed to have lived in Mekong River, which flows through Laos, Thailand, Cambodia, and Vietnam. The circle-shaped hands above the head greeting from most Southeast Asian region. 
The martial arts in the movie which was pulled from Muay Thai, a traditional Indonesian wrestling. Arnas, combat sticks, a martial arts from the Philippines, tuk-tuk, mode of transportation from Thailand, salakot, a traditional lightweight headgear among Filipinos and Vietnamese. And a lot more. Oh my god! Wow! Conclusion, if we'll analyze carefully any body of literature, we will find these gems of knowledge, the rich heritage of people with diverse cultural backgrounds. You just have to read between the lines. Wow!